Hi everybody and welcome into the workshop. A uh, few people have been asking if I would do a workshop tour, so um, I thought, yeah, why not? Show you uh, some of the tools that I use to create some of the things that I do. And, um, you know, like everybody, you're gonna have to excuse a little bit of mess in here. Um, it's not perfect. There's lots going on. You know, I've always got several builds on the go. Um, some for me, some for other people. So let's start with the heart of the uh, the building and this is my scale workshop um, not a lot in here I don't have a lot on display because um, you know when I'm working it gets frustrating when I'm having to keep moving things and knocking things over but it's a nice area where I can do a bit of video in I can take photographs uh, of people's trucks once they're done um, progress photos you know lots of people like to uh, to see how the builds are going so this is this is where the majority of it goes ahead this is one i've got in at the moment that's having a set of bumpers and some other little bits made um rc4 wheel drive tf2 based so he's having a set of bumpers uh, wants it in keeping with the uh the front that's on there already so that's going to be a bit of machining and um, this is my uh two post lift that i made um uses simple um sprung loaded pins like uh you know, like you use on a set of crutches, we push the pin in and it's sprung loaded. So I can adjust it for different heights and then the arms are all adjustable. Uh, and then just a, a few uh, 3D printed axle stands down there, again, for some pictures. This is my 3D printed welding bench with a metal top. I've got um, a Mias Racing uh, two-speed there to go in one of my builds. And just a few accessories. I've got some vices there for people that um, just need to make the handles for and uh, the famous logo so there we go so just moving on a little bit so up here I've got all my nuts and bolts and screws um, lots of tooling from for sort of soldering irons um, all my drill bits are all set out so all the different thread cutting that I do uh, within the drawer is the the clearance drill uh, the tapping drill size and taps and dies and everything for all the different sizes and then over this side just got nuts and bolts and screws and you know like soldering plugs and stuff like that uh, I won't open this cupboard because it's, it's a bit tatty in there um, but just got sort of oils and bits and glues and stuff in there so very important bits TV have movies on or watch YouTube while I'm in the workshop um, obviously I don't sit and watch it but it's on in the background, it's quite nice. I'll give you an extra point if you can guess the film. Moving around a little bit more, uh, majority of my easily accessible power tools. So I use predominantly DeWalt. I've used them for many years um, and I've got loads and loads of batteries and stuff. So, you know, it makes sense to stick with them. Uh, but one great Milwaukee tool I do have, I did a little video on it a little while back, is this right angled die grinder. Um, the only reason I've got a Milwaukee one is because DeWalt don't make one. So I had to uh, had to switch, well not switch brands, but I had to go cross brand, which upset me a little bit, but there you go. Eight inch bench grinder. It's fantastic for cleaning up metal when I'm welding, um, but also use it for sharpening my tip, uh, welding tips and things like that. Uh, belt sander, absolutely fantastic bit of kit this is. Um, it's great for move, removing lots of material from something. And again, when I'm welding, if I want to get something um, flat or straight quickly, it's brilliant for, for taking quite a bit of material off. So I've got my little um, TIG welding station here. TIG welder from Artec Welding. Uh, for those that are in the UK, if you're gonna look at getting a, a TIG MIG or ARC set, then these are fantastic. This is, um, again, I've done a video on this. Absolutely brilliant bit of kit. And, and you know, it's one of those things, I've always wanted to do it and it just it just makes it a lot easier for me, a um, lot quicker, and you know gives me the ability to tack things that I'm making together, um, which silver soldering doesn't. So silver soldering is fantastic; it's a very lovely joint, but you know you can't tack stuff together. Have to excuse the ticking in the background. This is my diesel heater, so this is what basically keeps me alive during the winter. Um, in the UK here, it's zero degrees outside today, or maybe one or two, um, but in the workshop it's 16 degrees, so that's, that's quite palatable. 
Uh, so I've got that, got a bit, you know, a bit of safety there, fire extinguisher and stuff by the door. Um, tooling, this is tooling for my milling machine. So I've got parallels here. I've got different sets of collets. These are all for holding the tools in the chucks. And in this cupboard, I've got all my sort of um, measuring tools. So I've got spare verniers, um, sort of less accurate or not quite so good quality ones. So if I'm scraping marking metal, then quite often I'll use these ones rather than my nice Mitutoyo ones. Um, just got uh, lots of tap wrenches and die stocks in there. I'm on the lookout for some Starrett ones. If anyone's got any they want to get rid of, let me know. Um, Dremel tools are absolutely invaluable in this hobby. So I've got a couple of those in there. Um, lots of different tips and uh, cutting bits for those. All my milling cutters. So different sort of special ones at the back, ball nosed, and ones for doing um, like counter sinking and stuff. And then sort of run of the mill stuff at the front here. And then just lots of different like pick set screwdrivers, like tiny little screwdrivers that, to be honest, I don't really use them on the models. I use them, I like repairing stuff as well, so I quite often use them on those. And then just a few odd sort of cutters that are a bit sacrificial. So if I want to cut something that's a bit hard, then I usually use one of those. Um, so this is my favourite machine in the workshop, don't tell the lathe, um, but this is my milling machine uh, using a um, system called Touch DRO, so this records the positions of the milling machine, so if I move the milling machine um, it records it and that's how I'm able to get things made accurately, I've uh, done quite a few little upgrades on it as well, so I've got a tachometer there that tells me how fast the spindle's going because um, you need to match your tooling to whatever material you're cutting. So it's important that you know you run drills at the right speed and milling cutters at the right speed. Um, otherwise you can blunt them or you end up breaking them, which is not good. And yeah, little milling machine. This is just a, it's based on a Seagex 2 milling machine. Um, brilliant starter machine for anybody. Um, I'd highly recommend it, especially for this hobby. It doesn't take up a lot of room, but you know, it's, it's more than, um, more than enough for most things. I've just got a cheap spanner set there that um, I use for like using on the clamps and stuff like that. So going up here, just got a little bit of storage, got my chargers up there, got my transmitter. Um, I use these drawers up here for sort of bulk storage, so storing me um, cables and bits and bobs like that. So anything that um, if I'm doing any soldering, I can quickly go and get a bit of cable here. Got some paints up here. Um, and then I've got uh, a drawer with sort of spare servos, speed controllers, that sort of stuff. A few models up here. This is this model here is um, a Defender. Started off as a, um, like a county, for those that know it. Um, sort of evolved quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be resurrecting that shortly because um, it's a bit sad that I've not been using that for a long time. So I'm gonna be doing a bit of work on that. Also like trucks, I'll show you that that quickly in a minute. Um, so a couple of dozers there, it's a D11 and a D5, both fully RC, they're both converted from Bruder. So this one, the D11, is quite a, quite a piece of kit actually. Um, must get that out this summer. And the little D5 there, both running servos as drive units and then um, sort of servo actuators for moving the, the blade up and down, stuff like that. Um, I think I did videos on those as well, so if anyone's interested in those, look back through. Uh, that is proper Caterpillar yellow as well, um, except for obviously the 3D printed wheels, which I'll get round to this year. Uh, I might even do a bit of work on that this year, maybe put some metal tracks on it, don't know yet. Um, depends how the channel goes, really. <laughs> yeah, so that's um, a couple of my, my machines there. Excuse the mess on here, this is sort of, bit, use it as a bit of a, a junk bit at the moment, but this is my, um, King hauler. I'm just making a bumper for somebody, so I'm just using it as a pattern. But, uh, yeah, so the customer is making a King hauler, or Grand hauler actually, which is the longer one, um, wrecker. So I've already made them the crane for the back, um, and they've had that a while. And then they decided they wanted to come back and have some more work done, so uh, made this bumper for them. That's my bumper that's normally on there with a nice big toe point on the front. Uh, just a bit of junk on here. I'm also a bit of an avid collector. 
of I like vintage stuff. So that's a 1978 Sharp radio, which I bought a car boot sale for two pounds. Uh, cleaned it all up, got it all working, and um, yeah, that's my shop radio. Um, I know I've got a DeWalt one out there, but it's not the same. Um, it's not the same at all. Uh, safety equipment, so this is when I'm out playing with the lads out in the fields. Um, we're doing our digging and what have you with the trucks. This is what I wear. <laughs> bit silly, I know, but you know, I like to have a bit of a laugh as well. Um, not much down there, just a bit of junk storage really, uh, just to get things out of the way when I'm working. A um, lot of solvents and paints up here, so um, like cleaning materials and stuff like that. If I need to clean metal when I'm uh, welding or painting, then stuff's up there. Um, different sprays, lubricants and you know, freeing oils and stuff. Here's the wrecker, sitting on the shelf, feeling a bit sorry for itself, it's not been out for a while. Um, did recently fit the new wheels on it, which was pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to giving those a go. Um, just the store the transmitters up here for um, a truck and my diggers, just to get them out of the way really, so I don't get dirty and dusty. Again, set of spanners and a few tools just above the lathe. Again, this is another fantastic piece of kit. Um, yeah, there's a lot of sort of Chinese replicas out there, but this is. Um, I was very lucky, got a very good deal on, on both these machines from a good friend. And uh, this is a Chester UK lathe, it's absolutely stunning to use. Um, for the size of it, very accurate, but it's just a pleasure, pleasure to use. And I've done a few upgrades on that as well. Got a decent quick change tool post on it. Um, made some new hand wheels, which are a bit more comfortable. Did a, a quick stop upgrade on the tail stock as well. Um, just otherwise it had a nut and bolt, you've got to undo that all the time, it's quite annoying. Tooling for the lathe behind, so rather than change the tool I just changed the holder. So lots of different tools there. So I've got cutting tools, boring bars, knurling tools. So a knurling tool is used to put this sort of, um, this grip, as you call it on there. Uh, parting tools, that thin blade one there, get my finger in the right place. Parting tool, so if you machine something round and then you want to cut it off, don't use a hacksaw, use a parting tool. Chamfering tools, um, again, drill chucks, I'm a bit lazy, so rather than keep changing the bits, I, I have different chucks, so it um, takes two seconds to change a chuck. Uh, and then just cutting fluids for uh, when I'm thread cutting or if I'm um, you know, machining a, a, a bright finish or something on, on a piece of material. Uh, again, just um, a decent set of Allen keys there. These are the Vera ones, um, or Wera, however you want to pronounce it. Really, really highly recommend these. Um, if you've got a bit that's rounded off, then normally get it out. Um, very good quality, pleasure to use. Uh, got a little um, 18th TRX scale um, Unimog that I'm building, sort of a little replica to the, to the Mogwai. Um, this is my old surface plate that I did all my solder, soldering on. Um, still got it, it's still very useful. You know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a big metal surface, so it's quite handy for, for marking out or, um, you know, if you want to get make sure something's flat. And then here we are back at the uh, the sort of mainstay of the, um, the studio, really. So this is my uh, welding table that I um, designed and uh, had cut locally this is laser cut it's absolutely stunning finish on this um, from the company that made it uh, I forget the name of it at the moment but um, I could probably post a link if anybody's interested and if anyone's interested in one of these themselves then um, you know I'm more than happy to share the file so I've got a nice big surface here um, this is about 18 inches well this whole table is 900 mil um, side to side and 500 deep so it gives you an idea of um, the sort of size of it. So it gives you a nice big surface for working on, um, but also gives me a nice big surface for laying stuff out. And, you know, I've been making these little jigs and bits. Um, everything fits in the holes, it will. If I look at what I'm doing rather than try and look at the screen, then um, it'll work much better. So if I wanna, for instance, if I make a, a jig for something and I just wanna hold it while I'm welding it, so I put it in here, push that shut, and that's locked in, can't move while I'm welding. Um, and just lastly, this is my camera jig. So camera jig that I made, um, 
very simple, but I'm able to clamp it anywhere on this welding table. And also I can clamp it on here, on, on the old surface plate to use as a, a, a weight basically. Um, and with that, I can pretty much cover the whole workshop. So I can, I can put it in the vise on the other side um, by the milling machine if I want to film over there and uh, I can have it over here. So yeah, and again, again, back to the, um, back to the, the scale shop really. So that's it. That's a, that's a tour of my workshop. I won't go into the covers and everything because it's pretty boring. But you know, um, I've got lots of spares in there. I've got uh, extra tools. You know, I've probably got five times the amount of power tools that I've shown you. Um, you know, tools are my thing really. Uh, if I can buy a tool, I'll buy a tool. You know, it's, it's just uh, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I buy tools. So there you go. And that's it. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed a little tour of the workshop. If anyone's got any questions or queries, let me know. If you're interested in having some parts made, I have got a little bit of a queue at the moment, uh, and I've got some bits and bobs obviously that I want to do for myself because I'm attending the SST again this year. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Uh, and as usual, please like and subscribe, tell all your friends, and you know, the bigger the channel gets, the better the videos are gonna get. So thanks a lot, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.